Hey everyone, I'm Michael. I'm the customer success lead at Xano. And in this video, I just want to quickly uh, talk about the different functions uh, available in the function stack, or just in general, what are functions and how do they work in Xano? Um, well, first of all, if you haven't seen the uh, no code API builder, I'm just going to jump to the API right now. Um, I'll just open up this get category, but basically we have this no code API builder. Um, where you can see the basic workflow or anatomy of an API endpoint. And this is how you will build um, all your complex business logic in Xano. There's really three parts, the inputs or query parameters, um, the function stack, and the response. But I want to focus on number two, which is the function stack and the functions uh, available within it. Um, so the function stack is going to be the actual inner workings of your different API endpoints. And this function stack is going to be available throughout your workspace. Um, also in cron jobs or background tasks, as we like to call them in Xano, and also in custom functions, which I'll touch on a little bit more, but it's basically a way to create your own uh, functions to be reused elsewhere. Um, so we can very easily add uh, a new function to our function stack, either by hitting this plus button here, this one to add a new entry below, or even this one to add one at the bottom. But I'm just going to select this. And when you do that, you see all these different categories of functions that are available. So let's talk a little bit about them. So database request. This is when you're interacting with the database. You can see when I click on this, there's a whole uh, bunch of different options of functions. Um, there's query all the records where you can do additional filtering, joins, um, et cetera, to manipulate your data. You can get just a single record. Um, I'm going to skip down editing record, add record, add or edit record, which is a very powerful function. It's going to look through the database for a record. If it uh, exists, it's going to update it. If it doesn't, it'll add it. Uh, database transaction, if you have uh, mission critical uh, stacks or multiple functions together that uh, should only execute if everything is successful. Um, so all our functions, there's more information detailed in our documentation. Uh, there's also some tutorials on some, so please check that out. This is going to be more of a high level overview. I'm going to move on to data manipulation. So if you need to store things in variables, uh, update variables or objects, do conditional if-then statements, loops. Uh, these array functions are uh, very nifty. Uh, they take some complexity away by uh, removing the loop um, and manipulating arrays in a very nice fashion. Definitely recommend uh, checking that out if you're working with arrays. Uh, we have data caching where there's a whole tutorial on these functions and they're powered by Redis. Um, these are uh, available on our dedicated resource plan. Um, but very powerful tool, especially if you're working with uh, external APIs with large payloads. Um, that can be very handy. Uh, cryptography, so if you need to do some kind of encoding or create some kind of token, um, these are all available as well. Um, custom functions, I mentioned them a little bit earlier. I'm going to skip this. I'll come back. Um, you also have utility functions where there's things like preconditions where you must enforce something that's true to set a layer of uh, maybe security to happen. You can set uh, HTTP headers, uh, get all inputs if you're using a webhook and you need to capture all the data coming in. Uh, so there's a lot here. You can calculate distance. Um, so once again, not going to go through all of these. Please check out our documentation. Um, but I just kind of want to go over a um, piece by piece little overview content upload. If you need to create uh, metadata for image, video, or attachment to be stored in the database. Create a file resource. So if you're hitting an external API and they're providing you with the raw image data, you can create that file to then create the image metadata. Um, the external API request function. So with Xano, you can integrate with any third-party API. You'll do it with this function. There's tutorials on it. You can import the curl. You can build the API call right here in Xano if you don't have the curl. Um, so a lot here. Another thing um, about functions before I just touch on custom functions. Um, here, right now, you can see I have this query all records for my category table. When you create a function, um, they will almost always have a return variable. Um, you can see this one is return as category here in orange. Um, and we can change the name of those to whatever we want. Um, but basically, in Xano, um, in our function stack, you can stack functions, and they will be performed in a linear fashion. Um, and each time a function executes, they'll return the output um, of what just ran in the return in the uh, form of this return variable, 
Why is that important? Because you can actually uh, pass data uh, from function to function down the function stack uh, to manipulate that data so we can get it as exact um, as we want, uh, which is very important because um, you know sometimes we're working with different tools and we can get the data, but we can't transform it in exactly the way you want. The great thing about Xano um, is it really shines in transforming that data to get it in the exact way uh, that we may need it to be. So just keep that in mind. Lastly, I'm just going to hit on custom functions. Um, there's a whole tutorial on it, but basically if you jump to the library and go to functions, I'll just add a function real quick. Um, they're a way to make reusable logic and they have the same workflow as the no code API builder. You see there's inputs, the function stack, it's the same exact function stack, um, and then a response. The only difference here is instead of an endpoint URL that you would use to connect this function uh, to a front end, uh, you actually are able just to reuse this function in any function stack uh, in Xano, whether that be an API endpoint, another custom function, or the background tasks, which are the cron jobs, right? So as you can see, I have the same function stack. And if I go to custom functions now, because I've created this test one, you can see that's now available there. Um, so that's a very great useful tool. You can even convert um, API endpoints into these custom functions if in case you need to, you realize you built some logic and you'd rather uh, be able to reuse it or move it to an API group. Um, so just another piece of uh, information there. Um, you may or may not already know that, but uh, that's about it for uh, this function stack. Obviously there's a lot of power here with data transformation. You can do a whole lot. Um, we have more tutorials going into the specifics and use cases, also our documentation. Um, additionally, on the note of just data transformation in general, we have our filters, um, which are a whole another library of data transformation that are really powerful uh, on the fly things. But um, we'll, we'll have more tutorials on that, uh, our documentation, if you want to check that out. Um, but just want to give you guys a high level overview. So I hope you found this was helpful. If it was, please like the video and subscribe to our channel. Uh, we're always coming out with more content. Uh, so thanks for watching and see you guys in the next one.